Hi, I'm Dr. Jerry Jackson, out with the wild things. The little blue heron is a small heron, adult standing only a little over two feet high. An adult little blue heron is easily identified by its uniform slate blue-gray body feathers that shade into a dark reddish-brown upper neck with slate blue again on top of its head. Fledgling little blues have a solid white plumage and late in their first year go through a slow transition to an adult's slate blue. Individuals during that transition are often referred to as calico herons. Both adults and juveniles have a black-tipped bill that is bluish at the base. Bare skin on the face is also blue in adults and older yearlings, but dull yellow when they leave the nest. By day, the little blue heron is usually a solitary bird that feeds on fishes, crayfish, and other small aquatic animals in both fresh and salt water. At night and during nesting, however, little blue herons join with other little blues and other species in often very large concentrations. The little blue heron is a southern bird, most common from East Texas, all of the states bordering the Gulf of Mexico and southern Atlantic coast, but regularly nesting in a sliver of Atlantic coast from Virginia to southern Maine. It also nests south of our border in the Caribbean, Mexico, and into northern South America. During nesting, little blue herons nest in colonies that can include many species and dozens to thousands of little blue herons. Nests are placed in small trees and shrubs, and each nest is a flimsy platform of sticks built in two to three days. Each male ardently defends a territory extending about a yard from his nest, but he has to take time out to eat, and when he's gone, neighbors often steal twigs from his nest, sometimes dumping chicks or eggs to the ground. With the buildup of cattle egrets in North America in the 1950s, little blue heron nesting populations declined in some areas. Cattle egrets build similar nests and can feed nearby, while little blue herons have to fly to the nearest water to find food. Cattle egrets are experts at nest twig theft, and little blue herons are often their victims. Little blue herons are opportunists, feeding in shallow water along rivers, streams, and in salt and freshwater marshes. Their nesting coincides with the beginning of the dry season in Florida, a time when waters are receding and fishes become concentrated in pools that are increasingly shallow. At such times, several little blue herons might be seen fairly close together. At other times, they are more solitary feeders. Flooded grasslands with dense vegetation and marsh areas with emergent plants are favored sites where they move slowly, stalking whatever creatures are there. Little blue heron prey includes small fishes, crayfish, small crabs, frogs, and a great diversity of insects. Occasionally, a little blue heron will hunt in association with other animals, such as following a pied-bill grebe hunting just offshore. Both benefit. As the grebe moves, it may chase prey towards shore, and the heron gets a chance to capture it. If the heron misses prey near shore, it may swim to deeper water, where the grebe might catch it. One of the most fascinating things about little blue herons is that during their first year after hatching, a little blue heron is all white, and adults often chase them away. Young little blue herons then associate with snowy egrets, white ibises, and other white birds. As the adage goes, there's safety in numbers, and in nature, it's often the odd individual in a group that gets eaten. By joining with other white birds, a young little blue heron becomes less conspicuous and at the same time benefits from having company that might increase the chances of a potential predator being spotted. Another sidelight on the white plumage of young little blue herons is that after leaving the nest, young migrate north for the summer, often well outside the normal breeding range of its species. In the fall, those young return south to breeding areas, never to go north again. Thus I knew little blue herons as a white bird when I was growing up in Iowa. At the time, I wondered why they were called little blue. Little blue herons were among the lucky species in the late 1800s when egrets, long filamentous feathers on the back of most herons and egrets during the breeding season, were sometimes worth their weight in gold as adornments for ladies' hats. Little blue herons are unusual among herons in that they do not grow egrets. But little blue herons do have special breeding plumage, elongate pointed gray feathers on top of the head, and long narrow pointed feathers that grow on their back. 
so hunters often passed them by and little blue herons were never endangered. Today, however, other factors threaten the little blue heron and other wetland wildlife. Foremost among the threats is the loss of wetland habitats, but plastic bags, nylon fishing line, and other accompaniments of modern society that end up in wetlands all take a toll. So too do pesticides, oil, and other pollutants. The little blue heron is a resilient species and remains an interesting and beautiful survivor for now. With the Wild Things is produced at the Whitaker Center and the College of Arts and Sciences at Florida Gulf Coast University. For the Wild Things, I'm Dr. Jerry Jackson.